Hi, everybody. This is Rahul with the Alternative Investors Hangout, and today we have a special guest. His name is Sandeep Jaitley, and he is of the Gold Standard Institute, and, and he is also at bullionbasis.com. Thanks, Sandeep, for joining us. Thanks, Rahul. All right. The first thing I wanted to get into is Europe. We have Europe that just got downgraded like crazy yesterday. What do you see happening over there? QE3 or QE3.5 to paper over the problem for a bit in the U.S.? Or do you see some of these countries defaulting and going back to their original currencies? Um, I don't see the, the countries um, going back to their uh, individual currencies. Um, I think all of the members of the euro currently will still be in the euro uh, in five years' time. Um, except that the currency will be um, completely devalued in the interim. Um, so you're not, you're not going to get, in my opinion, you're not going to get countries exiting the euro because contract law um, in finance um, would just be a complete nightmare having to resolve all of that into individual currencies again. Um, so that's the sort of that's the sort of limiting factor, really, that says that all of these countries are going to likely to remain in the euro, not go back to their original currencies. All right. You're talking about the devaluation of the euro. So right now the Dixie, the dollar index, is around 80, 81, yeah. and the euro is, I think, around 1.27. So do you see the euro going under 1%? Uh, or do you see what what do you see happening with the ra well, relationship between the Dixie and the Euro? Well, um, I think the dollar index is 35% Euro is composed of 35% Euro against the dollar anyway. So I think we can just stick to the Euro. But I think the Euro will go um, below parity. Um, it's just a question of whether it does it um, this year or next year. Um, um, I definitely see that happening. What that means for the dollar index, I don't know, but probably towards the 100 region, 110, um, I can quite easily see that happening. All right, switching gears, how does the Iranian situation play into the potential banking system collapse? If there is an attack, we'll see oil at $200, $300 a barrel, and the banking system will be under severe pressure since this will kill the housing market. And we also know that the banks are heavily invested in the housing market. Mm -hmm. So do you see bank runs happening around the world because of this fragile housing market and the banking market, or what? Um, well, obviously, I think if there was a strike on Iran, there, there, there might be a few bank runs. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I don't really have an opinion on whether, whether Iran is going to be um, uh, attacked. Um, but obviously, if oil did go to to three hundred dollars, that would uh, that would cause a lot of problems. It's hard to know where exactly, though. Um, but but I must say though that I don't. I'm not one of those people that that thinks that Iran is about to be attacked imminently. Um, so it's not really a part of my financial discounting at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're part of the Gold Standard Institute, mm. and you guys talk about the gold standard. So do you see Western countries adopting some sort of gold standard, like a 25% gold backing? And how would this come about? Do you see this happening because of a currency crisis in the U.S.? Um, well, I don't think any currency crisis is going to start in the U.S. Um, I mean, but for what everyone says about the United States dollar, it's been very resilient over the past sort of five years or so. Um, I think you're more likely to see a currency crisis out of Europe than you are out of um, out of um, <clears throat> out of America. Um, but um, so sorry, what was the question again? I I forgot on what. Yeah. So do you see Western countries like the U.S. Yes. adopting some sort of gold standard? Yeah. I mean, um, no, um, I don't. I mean, I think that the um, the the closest you might get is. Um, a greater recognition of, 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 of gold as some part of global currency, sort of SDR type thing. Um, but I don't think that um, you'll get countries saying, um, you know, we're going to put our, our currencies with a 25% gold backing, whatever that means anyway, you know. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, you'd be, the, 
any, any country that did do that would be implying that there is something special about gold which they've been trying to deny for the past 50 years, you know. So um, it would be a bit uh, counterintuitive. Um, do, do, you, do you see what I mean by <laughs> I mean, yeah, 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 I see what you're saying. So I, I, so, not to say that the people won't start using gold more, you know. Um, I think that you're already seeing signs of that signs of that happening, you know, a lot of people willing to accept payments in gold and silver. Um, and how the government deals with that, it's hard to say, but I'm sure it's not going to be pleasant at some point, um, but, but not just yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about the SDR probably as the world's reserve currency down the road. So what do you see happening with the price of gold then? Do you see $3,000 an ounce, or is that hard for you to determine? I mean, I, d I, I don't... I don't watch the gold price well obviously I do because I manage a gold fund but I'm not too um, not too concerned about day-to-day um, -day movements in the gold price because you know you're 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 you're, you're measuring something with an elastic band um, when you when you look at it in terms of fiat currencies um, and how high the gold price can go well you have to say well how depraved can governments get and there's obviously no limit to uh, to that so ultimately, the, there's no limit to the uh, to the gold price. Um, but what people should bear in mind is that <coughs> they should constantly buy gold and constantly save in gold and silver. So um, if you buy a little amount every month, um, you're, you're, you're not really concerned about the price, um, especially after five or six years, um, because because that's the way you should really look at the precious metals. I think. But I could quite easily see gold at two and a half thousand dollars at some some point this year. But I'm not I'm not unusual in saying that though. So <laughs> <laughs> Alright, one last question regarding the SDR. So why do you think they're going to switch from let's say the dollar to the SDR then? Because if you claim that the dollar is going to be a strong currency, then what's the point of switching to an SDR, an IMF currency? Well, um I suppose I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure whether that will happen um, either way, you know. Um, all, all, the problem is that the dollar can't, can't maintain its status with um, China and India um, doing what they're doing. And at some point, um, even though I can't speak for China, but India doesn't want uh, to be involved in capital markets sort of outside of the domestic area. Um, when they do, um, they will want some recognition. I imagine um, that, that that their currency is 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 suitable to be part of a reserve currency, whether that's on its own or part of an SDR. I don't know. You know, so the reason is purely just because you know when empires not collapse, but when empires reach their peak, you know there are other contenders. So. Uh, I'm not saying that the dollar is going to uh, lose value against all the other currencies. It's just that um, its reserve status will be changed somewhere along the line. Not for many, not for a decade at least, I imagine. Um, it's still pretty hard to topple the dollar. But China and India are waiting on the sidelines, and an SDR would be, I suppose, eventually the sort of the best way of capitalizing upon whatever they want to do. So do you think China will probably overtake the U.S. because of their strong manufacturing base, or what? Uh, well, it, depend, it depends what you mean by, by overtaking the U.S. I mean... Um, <laughs> not overtaking, but like... They've when been around for 5,000 years longer than the U.S., so I mean, <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's pretty hard to overtake someone if you're 5,000 years younger than them, but... Uh, right. Yes, I mean, there's an ethic in China and India of, of producing things and doing things, you know, and not acting as a service economy. Um, you know, um, China is at the, the, probably the same stage in their uh, manufacturing, manufacturing evolution as Japan was in the 1960s or 50s, you know. Um, no one liked Japanese products in the 50s and 60s, thought they were quite, quite cheap. But then, you know, come the 70s and 80s, you know, if it, if it wasn't a Japanese manufactured product, it was it was it was useless. You know, it wasn't wanted. So, but that kind of mentality takes time to change. You know, 
you're already seeing Chinese cars um, being being driven domestically, obviously, and I'm sure it's just a matter of time before you start seeing seeing Chinese cars all around the world, just like you do uh, Hondas, you know. Um, so that is the, the the mentality that will that will that will make sure that countries like China and India remain on top, um, not from a fiscal sense, but from a philosophical standpoint. All right, thanks, Sandeep Jaitley, for joining us. No problem. Thanks. And how can people do business with you before you go? Um, go, go to my website. Um, have a look at my website, bullionbasis.com. Uh, there's a lot of information about um, what, what I do in the gold market um, and plenty of uh, contact details there. Um, also, Gold Standard Institute's website. Um, uh, there are a bunch of us who, who, who lecture around the world um, with Professor Fekater. Um, who you might be familiar with, um, but, mm -hmm. but that's 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 the best place to go, uh, and obviously Professor Feketer's website as well, professorfeketer. dot com, and uh, send me an email or, or or whatever. Okay, all right, thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Rahul.